Hey, Mr. War here. Not your friendly little vampire that you see on your screen. He's my avatar. Hey, I'm ready to go. Yes. Ooh, you know what? This should say three. Pretend you didn't see that. Okay, guys, close your eyes. And okay, see, that was there the whole time. This is review video number three from chapter one. Go math. And we're on number problem 11, and we're basically doing what you have had to get you ready for the test. So here we go. It says evaluate the numerical expression. Let's go ahead and do that. Evaluate. It's like to solve. You're actually finding the value of. Actually, you know, this doesn't look like a near numerical expression, huh? They say it's a numerical expression because I guess there's nothing here. But we have actually an equal sign here. Your problem is wrong is the equation, right? Because once you have a actual equal sign, it's it's an equation. But anyway, let's evaluate it nonetheless. 67 minus 4. We always do parentheses first because of our good buddy, Pam Doss. That's right. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or most people just memorize it by Pam Doss, even though it's a word that doesn't really mean anything as far as I'm concerned. But uh, we do parentheses first, so 67 minus 4 is 63. We get 63 times 2 plus 4. And even though it would probably be easier just to say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and add my 6 here. This is not the order of things, my friends. We must multiply and divide first. So that means we have to take 63 times 2. If we multiply that, pretty straightforward. We get 126. Now I got plus 4 equals 130. Yes, that is how it works. Oh, yes. And I need to make sure that I give you the entire, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's that, you know that secret code word? Well, there's your start, okay? Woohoo! next page, and we keep moving. Whoa, Esteban, yay, you're in the problem. You're famous. Esteban displays his sports Hmm, trophies on shelves in his room. I mean, it probably wouldn't surprise me. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, go ahead. Turn the other way again. Yeah, this is... You got it, see? It was like it was never there. What do you mean it said uh, review two? I didn't see that. Anyways, it says he has four trophies on each of five shelves and four trophies on another shelf. And it says writing expression to represent the number of trophies... Uh, well, that's a big box that Esteban displays. Okay, so we had this last problem about stickers, and and truthfully, even though putting it in numerical expression is what we want to be able to do at some point, um, the difficulty of the problem um, always gets me to start drawing a picture. So, I mean, on that last problem, we could have done that, uh, it would have taken a little bit more time, and I'm kind of thinking time uh, on how much each of these videos are going to be. So in this case, let's go ahead and just do that. We have shelves in his room. It says he has four trophies on each of five shelves. Well, you know, the easiest thing before we start to put it as expression, let's, let's just imagine that, all right? We have five shelves, one, two, three, four, five. This is the top shelf here. So, you know, kind of think of it like a bookshelf. I know my drawing is so beautiful, yes. It looks crooked, but it's actually completely balanced. Anyway, there's four trophies on each one. So, this gives us the visual that may have helped on that last problem, and I'm just doing that to show you that the X's are the trophies. And there we go. Now we're getting the visual of it. Now, it says that he also has four trophies on another shelf. Okay. So he has four trophies on each of five shelves. And then it says he has four trophies on another shelf. That almost seems like the same thing. It's probably when I made this problem, I wasn't actually thinking about that when I did it. But, so now we have one more. So write an expression to represent the number of trophies Esteban displays. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, right? So we have five shelves, so it's just kind of like five times four. Now, had I put different numbers in, let's just pretend, okay, that I didn't put that, and then we put a two there instead. So now we could show that, right? Five times.
times 4 plus 2. They wanted you to write an expression such as that. Pretty straightforward. Nothing tricky about this one. This was much, much easier. Okay, which brings me to this. Yes, it is not an oval. It is the letter O. All right. And you know what? I'll give you one more, too. Why not? Okay. Moving on to the next problem. What do we have? Johnny, what do we have behind window number five? Okay. And, you know, it looks just like the other letters, doesn't it? Because we're on review. Number three. It says Veronica is solving this problem in math class. Okay. And it says that Nicole buys five cases of water. Wow, cool. Each case of water contains 12 bottles. Nicole drinks seven bottles of water. My goodness, Nicole. You are thirsty. Okay. Anyway. No, actually, no, that's good that she's drinking a lot of water. It's healthy. You know, helps filter her system. Clean the blood. So, and then it says, uh, okay, numer uh, Veronica writes a numerical expression to represent the situation. Of course, bringing math into real life. Her expression 12 minus 7 times 5 has a mistake. Ooh. Explain Veronica's mistake. Okay. Well, let's take a closer look. This She's buying five cases of water. Each case can tell us 12 water. So right there, you should be thinking 5 times 12, right? Kind of basically, it's like 5 plus 5 plus 12 times. So we're multiplying. It says Nicole drinks seven bottles of water assuming from that amount. So what Veronica had done, she put 12 minus 7 ooh, times 5. So I'm kind of wondering why she put 12 minus 7. Because I'm kind of thinking to myself, if she drank 7 bottles of the water, it seems to me that she would have instead, she would have the 5 times 12, okay, minus that 7 bottles. So we have to explain her mistake. Well, her mistake here in this case was she she actually, uh, and I'm actually having to put this up on the screen rather than write it out, but she actually, yeah, she put, she put 12 minus 7. She took 7 away from the 12 bottles, which was fine. But if 12 minus 7 is 5, now you're trying to take that 5, multiplying it by the 5 cases. That's not correct because you have basically 5 full cases of water. And if each case contains 12, you can see how that's not going to be the same. See, 12 minus 7, and then we have times 5. So now so you have 12 minus 7, you're getting 5. You're going to end up with 25 when our answer should be 60 minus 7, which is 53. You see there's a huge difference. So, and that was because of each case of water. Okay, I will actually display that later. We're going to speed up this video here a little bit. Oh, write an expression to find how many bottles of water are left and then solve it. Oops, we kind of already did that. So, yeah, we determined that it was 5 times 12 or 12 times 5. Okay, and then we're subtracting the 7 and that's our expression. And we solved it. We found out it was 53. 60 minus 7. Yes, I believe it's 53. Okay, moving on to the next problema. Okay, as they say in Espanol, look at that. Oh, another 3. Boy, you can hardly tell I changed it. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> okay, Ooh, question number 14. We're cruising along. Look at this. Ethan, looks like everybody from our class is in this math stuff. But anyway, what do we have here? It says, Ethan has 48 action figures. Really? I bet they're Star Wars. Um, he separates his action figures into three equal groups to share with his friends. Whenever I hear that, he's going to take a, like a total and then break it into equal groups. I'm thinking division, my friends. I hope you are too. So let's go ahead and look at that. How many action figures does each friend get? Okay. Oh. We've got another little challenge here. It says, use the array to show your answer. Okay, I guess we could do that. So, and then this is something different. So, let's see here. Now, it says that we have three, three equal groups. So, I guess what one thing I could do is I could kind of say, well, this could be my three groups here, and then I have 48 all together. 
So if I just were to like cross, I could say take this 3 and then come across. Now, how am I going to know I get to 48? Because well, I'm just going to have to kind of, I could try different things. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, then we have 42, 45, 48. And all I did was count by threes. That was a strategy I used. You didn't have to do that. We'll double set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 times 3 must equal 48. And we did that using an array, which many times, you know, math problems ask you to draw a model. There's your model. So here we have to complete the division. And coming back again, let's put 16. That means that 48 divided by 3 equals 16. No, I like that problem. That was pretty straightforward. All right. Coming on to review number 3. Oh, this one had, oh, 2. <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. Anyway, Michael is making dinner for 8 people. Cool. Michael opens six cans of soup. Each can is 12 ounces. If everyone gets the same amount of soup, how much soup will each person get? Use numbers and words to explain your answer. So we have to kind of do both here. This will probably be the last problem here, which means I'm going to have to do, let's see what it is. And T, I think it is. Yeah. And we'll just give you that. Okay, so let's take purple. So anyways, first thing is we got eight people. Okay. And he's going to open, get out of my way, buddy. Six cans of soup. Okay, six total cans. And I'm going to put this little symbol at. That just means basically this is how many in each one. Six cans at 12 ounces. By putting that at there, it kind of lets me know, ooh, I might be multiplying. So if everyone gets the same amount of soup, how much soup will they get? So he, this is what we need to find out. This is what we know. We know there's eight people all together. We know that there's going to be six cans, and each can is going to have 12 ounces. That's just what we know when we're trying to find out is how much soup will each person get. Well, we can't really determine that this way because we have six cans and 12 ounces, and those are like two different units, cans and ounces. They're, they're different. And so six cans won't obviously be enough. So each person couldn't possibly get one can. It's going to be a little bit less. So we're just going to figure this out in ounces. Well, 12 times 6 is set tw 72. So let's multiply so you can see how that's done. 2 carry the 1. 6 times 1 plus 1, 72. So now we have 72. Now if we have 72 ounces, that would tell us that we basically need to take that total amount make that those equal groups, those eight people. Well, that's a nice easy one, nine. So it means nine ounces. Now, what we need to do is put this in number N words. We've kind of done both, but if we were to write an explanation, we would, would basically say, well, in order for, uh, in order to solve this problem, I would first need to find out what were the total amount of ounces that could be found in those six cans, okay? And would those total ounces divide by the number of people being served and then we find out that that's how many ounces that you're going to have seems pretty easy right now um that pretty much ends this video we're right at the point where we need to be i think and there'll probably be one more uh i know i'm trying to finish up so at least before i fall asleep here it's my friend.